Hi everybody, welcome back to Synthetic Biology 1. Today we're going to play around with a simple model of molecular interaction. A molecule, called A, is moving around randomly inside the cell. When it hits another molecule B, they stick together and form a complex. Using the rules of mass action kinetics, we can turn this picture into an equation. The rate of the formation of the complex is Kf times A times B minus Kr times the concentration of the complex. Kf and Kr are rate constants that describe the speed of the forward and the reverse reactions. Okay, so that's cool. We made an equation. We can put this into a computer and use it in a model, but computers are kind of for nerds, and I would rather see what we can learn from this without a computer. And that means we need to simplify things a little bit. The reaction goes forward at some rate, and the reaction goes back, but which direction wins? At the end of the day, are we going to see more of the AB complex or more of the subunits? To calculate this, we make a key assumption, the steady state assumption. That means we're looking at the system A, B, AB at a point when concentrations are no longer changing over time. The complex forms, the complex breaks up, but eventually the system will reach a state when the two rates are balanced and nothing changes anymore. We can represent this state mathematically by assuming or requiring that DABDT is zero. This is nothing but the definition of the steady state. The concentration AB has zero change over time. Note that this is a big assumption. Most systems in biology are changing over time. We are neglecting and excluding those systems. When we make the steady state assumption, we sacrifice our ability to say anything about those systems. But look at what we get in return. We've taken this challenging differential equation and removed the derivative part. Instead, we now have a simple piece of algebra. This is the kind of thing that we can solve with just a pencil and paper. So let's do it. We want to know which state is more common the complex AB or the individual subunits. So we take this over here, we divide by that, we solve for the ratio. The ratio of the complex form to the individual subunits is equal to the forward rate constant divided by the reverse rate constant. This ratio, Kf over Kr, is sometimes called the equilibrium constant. It has a special name because it's a useful way to get quick information about an equilibrium reaction like this one. When it's large, we expect to see mostly the complex. When it's small, mostly the subunits. Whew. It's a big old ball of math to digest there, but it came together pretty nicely, so let's review. We started with some molecules, A and B. We draw arrows to represent how they form a complex. Then we turn those arrows into an equation. Finally, we make the steady state assumption to reduce that equation into something we can solve. We calculate an equilibrium constant, which summarizes whether the reaction will go forward or reverse. Easy? So until next time, keep it steady.